What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Sean Robert Johnson. As you know, I'm incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trent, New Jersey. I appreciate y'all tuning in to today's episode that we got for y'all, so let's just get straight to it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson. That's me, your host. As you know, I'm incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trenton, New Jersey. And don't forget to become a subscriber for free on both of our YouTube channels, at Prison Audio and at Sean Robert Johnson. Also, you can follow us on Instagram at Prison Audio and at Shaw John Twelve Twenty Two. That's S H A W J O H N One Two Two Two. So for today's topic, I want to talk about is dating someone while serving time in prison. Right, no matter if your sentence is short, whether it is long, but we just want to talk about it. And I talked about this topic you know, briefly here and there, but I want to dive deeper into it for the whole episode for today. So if you want to know, does being in prison affect how you view dating and how are we able to navigate relationships while we're incarcerated, that is a legitimate question because viewing dating is completely different from being in the free world, you know, you know, you have so many limitations. So like you got to put ultimate trust into that person that you are dating in the free world, that they are genuinely who they say they are. And it's hard navigating it because like I said, you have many different limitations. I like to look at it as a long distance relationship with restrictions. And it's like that because everything is on a set time, basically on phone calls uh, and stuff like that, you know, visits, and it's like you don't have that interaction back and forth how you would normally have on a daily basis in a relationship. So I'm just going to dive into a lot of that stuff throughout this episode, what I'm talking about. So in prison, we have prison dating sites. And a prison dating site website is a platform designed to connect us in prison with someone in the outside world who is interested in forming, you know, friendships, pen pal relationships, you know, sometimes even romantic connections. And these websites could be free depending where you go. You got some of us on Facebook, and then you got a lot of other ones that are paid memberships for us on this side, and it might be free on that side. Or I think it's, I don't think they ever charge anybody that's in the free world for a membership, right? But you have them. You got right a prisoner, right an inmate. You got um, Wire Hope and so many other sites that you can connect with somebody in prison. I actually have tried a couple of these before, and you know sometimes you get responses. I think it just depends on what the person looking for of that's on the outside world and how you format your profile to convey exactly what you're looking for. So that goes into a lot of of the connections that's made. So I want to start off with that, uh, how they generally work, and we want to start with profiles. So a profile that we make, it can include the information about ourselves. It's going to have our name, our age, our location, the prison that we're in, uh, our interests, our hobbies, and like, you know, like a little bio description of us. And these right here are something that is allowing a person to know who we are. You can add pictures. You can add poetry. You can add a lot of different things to your profile. And you are going to get matched up based on what a person is looking for. Like you go on the right of prison and be on there, like the first two weeks they put you on the main page, and then after that you go on a different list. Like if you haven't got mail in a while, they'll put you on that list. And every time you upload a picture, it's like an extra $10. But they'll put you back on that main list for like a couple of months, I think two months. So when a person go up there and they're able to go through the profiles, like you can look through age, gender, location, interest, uh, and those type of things to see what type of person that you want to contact that's in prison. Then you can either write one of us or you can send us an email through whatever our institution or email is, and that's how it normally works. So when it comes to communication, once that connection is made, the person in the free world can, like I said, can communicate through 
the, the website messaging system, right? So they do have like a little spot where you can say, yo, you can write a message to showing us in New Jersey State Prison and we'll send it to you. And then what they do is they'll print it out and then send me the letter from them. But you also have the additional option because you will be able to put your physical address up there. You'll be able to put, for instance, we got JP here right now currently. So you'll be able to put the JP address up there. And once you make that connection through either physical letter or JP, then you can open it up to whether you want to give that person your phone number. So now we can get your phone number and we can have phone calls outside of physical letters. We could do uh, video visits on the kiosks and different stuff like that as far as communication. Now, you do have some safety measures because many prisons, they in websites have safety measures in place to ensure the security and well-being of both sides. And a lot of people say, yeah, well, why do you have it that for y'all in prison? Because, now nah, you do meet some people that is crazy and will try to use people that's in prison. Now, I have seen it happen that people meet people that's in prison and they only there to try to ask people for for money that's in prison. I have seen that. And I have seen it the other way around, too. So that's why a lot of safety measures are in place. And along with the fact that when you put your profile up, you got to put the nature of your crime and how much time that you got. And the reason why that is is because the website is going to look through the DOC and everything to see if all the information match up so it can verify that you are who you say you are along with the picture. And they want to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Now, when you have support and resources, some websites offer additional resources such as articles, forums, and support groups for the people navigating relationships with incarcerated individuals, which is true. I briefly talked about that. So they set that up so you'll be able to uh, do different stuff like that, right, to have resource guides because these resources may provide guidance on communication, managing expectations, and dealing with challenges unique to prison relationships because relationships in prison is completely different. It's important to note that while these websites provide a platform for connections, People that utilize them should exercise caution and discretion when interacting with others online. Additionally, it's crucial to respect the rules and regulations of the prison system while corresponding with us because sometimes they will act crazy. Like nowadays, you cannot get a letter in the mail that has like different color writing on it or glitter on it or anything like that. Like kids can't change stuff like that. They're going to give us a photocopy of that. It's like, and it's because of a lot of stuff that happened in the prison with the rules and all that stuff. So they make them changes and it affect all of us. So when I was going back to the profile and I could just make up a generic profile right now on the spot for you. And this is just something similar that a lot of people use. So I'll say, uh, hi, my name is Sean Robert Johnson and I'm currently incarcerated at New Jersey state prison for a self-defense case, I've been incarcerated for over the last 17 years. However, despite my circumstances, I remain committed to personal and to I've remained committed to personal growth and positivity. Since I've been here in prison, I found solace in the sports, particularly basketball. I excel on the court and find it to be a source of both physical and mental strength for me, as well as me doing Bible studies. Uh, I'll do a podcast as a host. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a thriving entrepreneur. So these outlets have allowed me to connect with others and share messages of hope and resilience in so many different ways that show you that it's not about your situation. You know, I'm a Christian man, come from my family, and my faith has been a guide and light throughout my journey. I'm seeking genuine connections with, individual, with individuals who are understanding, compassionate, and open-minded. If you're interested in getting to know me, I'll be grateful for the opportunity to correspond and share experiences. Thank you for taking the time to read my profile. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Sincerely, Sean Robert Johnson, right? So that's just like something generic that you can just put together. But, you know, you want to be crafty of expressing yourself when you are making your profile because most of them allow you to do up to 250 words, but you don't got to be manipulative. It would just be who you are. All right, so when you think about how many men here at New Jersey State Prison use Dayton's website, and is it common? I think that it's a lot of them that does it here because – a lot of people, they be looking for that companionship, whatever their reasons is. 
that's their reason, you know. I don't really try to get into that if people is outside of my circle of who I deal with in here. But you have people that utilize it, and sometimes it go fairly well. I've just seen people get married off of these sites of meeting some people, you know. So it's, it's definitely a dope thing. So now that we have talked about the website, I want to talk about dating in prison in general. Because dating while serving time, especially time that we got down here, can be challenging, but it's not impossible. So here are some aspects to consider. One, correspondence. Many of us engage in pen pal relationships or correspondence with individuals outside of prison. This can be a way to establish connections and potentially develop romantic relationships over time. So you definitely want to do this. And, you know, if you have a female pen pal that, you correspond with it definitely can turn into a romantic relationship over time if y'all are both having those type of conversations. So it definitely can happen. Uh, the second one is visitation, and that is depending on the facility policies and the nature of the relationship. We may be allowed visits from friends, family, and even significant others. These visits provide an opportunity for face-to-face -face interaction and maintaining the relationships. So the visit options here are contact visits, so that's on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, either in the morning or afternoon. And if you're coming from out of state, you can actually do both. You could do all four. You could do Saturday uh, morning and afternoon, Sunday morning and afternoon. Uh, you also, we have what we call window visits, and it's like a little booth that you get uh, hour that you can sit there and talk through as a window. The contact visits are an hour and a half each time. You also got the video visits that you can get on the kiosk, which is 30 minutes, so that way you can still be in the comfort of your home right there. So those are just the different visitation op options that we, hear, that we have here at the prison I'm at. Number three, you got phone calls because in some cases we are allowed phone privileges, which can be used to maintain communication with loved ones outside of prison. Regular phone calls can help keep the relationship strong. And I'm saying that because if you go to ASSED, sometimes your sanction will be they will take away your phone time. So you can't use the phone at all, which is crazy, as well as they take away your JPay privileges. So you can't even email anybody, which is crazy. But the phone calls, you know, we're allowed to call up to 10 numbers on our list. We get a little phone list that we do every 90 days here. We can call up to 10 numbers. We can call each number 10 times a piece each day, and we able, like I said, to switch whatever numbers we out. And our phone calls right now at the current rate is $0.66 cent for every 15 minutes. It used to be like $5 and some change. But they come a long way. They have come a long way. So the next one I want to talk about, is support system. Having a supportive network outside of prison is crucial for maintaining a relationship. This could include friends, family, or support groups who understand and respect the dynamics of dating someone that's in prison. And you definitely got to have that good support system. Now, the one thing I didn't learn from watching shows like Love at the Lockup, uh, Prison Wise, or other shows, and even from my own experience of dating females from the past since I've been in prison, is that not everybody's going to agree with it. Some Your family and friends, for some reason, they just going to think like, yeah, this person ain't good for you for this reason and this reason and this reason, right? They think they just use you for whatever reason. And then on the other side, the person on the street, their family and friends can be saying the same thing. Yo, that person only want to use you because they in prison. So, like, that right there is something that happens a lot. It happens a lot. But, however... As long as both people are genuine, I think you can get past anything. And I think it just comes down to what are you actually looking for. Like me, if I'm going to date a female while I'm in prison, especially during this time, okay, I want to establish the friendship. Even if you want to have a romantic relationship, knowing how I am, who I am, of getting to know me over time, you got to establish a friendship. got to have honesty, right? I don't want to sit here and just lie about anything because I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be straight up and be blunt. If it hurts your feelings, it hurts your feelings, and that's just how I am. But I need honesty in return, you know, because that right there builds trust, and it allows the vulnerability and the openness to happen within a relationship so you actually can build a solid foundation. So 
those type of things and be willing to communicate is is long as you have that ingredients of things that ingredient that ingredients of things then it can go a long way you know it's a lot of stuff that's that's going to have to be discussed as far as boundaries you know but at the end of the day I'm going to do what I need to do and if you do your part and then you helping to kick up to, to get me up out of here that just make a good recipe for success right there All right but you know I try to do everything on my own. It's like any female that I ever personally have dealt with since I've been locked up, I have never asked any female for any money. I'm good. I, I know how to jail. And I'm not saying that because I'm not doing anything illegal while I'm in here. I just know how to jail and, and make my way through it. I just don't ever want somebody to feel like, oh, yo, I'm only doing this because I'm in prison. So that just always been me. But that's what it is. And goes into what I was just talking about, trust and communication, because like any relationship, trust and communication are essential. Both parties need to be open and honest with each other about their feelings, concerns, or expectations. So is there anything I find particularly rewarding or fulfilling about the relationships I form while being incarcerated? that I formed while being incarcerated, absolutely. In the past, it's been some dope females that I met. And even though, you know, they're not my person and I'm not with them no longer, you know, because I'm single today, but I done met some dope people that then kind of contribute to different things of my growth, like of having conversation and, and learning different things because I also learn is like, all right, keep me connected to the outside world, but then I'm learning stuff about you and say, okay, you're a good person, but it is not for me. I like these qualities these over here about you. I like these qualities about you. So I got to find my person that has these different qualities that I could extract from different females that I didn't dealt with over time. And then it shows me of what type of qualities that I don't want, but it also helped me want to change, like, okay, I need to change in this type of way to be this type of person in order for growth and improvement within myself. So I think it goes hand-in-hand in, hand in so many different ways. Well, you know, you, you learn a lot. So dating someone who is serving a long prison sentence comes with its own sets of challenges, including limited physical contact, restricted communication, and social stigma and societal stigma. However, with patience, understanding, and commitment, relationships can thrive even in challenging circumstances. And I just wanted everybody to know that. So now you just know different ins and outs of how it is of dating somebody in prison. So definitely want to do more episodes like this coming soon. If you have any questions, any comments, call 1-800-366-0911. That's 1-800-366-0911. Or send an email to stories at prisonaudio.com. That's S-T-O-R-I-E-S, the at sign, P-R-I-S-O-N-A-U-D-I-O.com. And don't forget to become a subscriber on both of our YouTube channels, at Prison Audio and at Sean Robert Johnson. And follow us on Instagram, at Prison Audio and at Shaw John 1222. That's S-H-A-W-J-O-H-N-1222. And thank you again for listening to another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson. That's me, your host, and everybody have a good day.